Joining me is my co-host, Brenna Calvert, and today our special guest is Conquer the Gauntlet pro team athlete, Ashley Samples, who recently had a brand new baby boy. Congratulations, Ashley, and welcome to the show. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah. Uh, Ashley. For those of you who don't know Ashley, she was uh, crushing it last year, uh, racing and the year before. She was the 2015 OCR uh, world champion in her age group. Was it 30 to 34, correct? Yep, that's correct. 2015 I'm talking about. Um, And then joined the Conquer the Grown Pro team last year and was dominating the season. I think you had, like, what, like 10 podium or 10th overall wins? Uh, Uh, Yeah, that sounds about right. And that was just in half a season uh, of racing because, obviously, they were pregnant and you stopped racing towards the end of the season. Dominating, like, loosely putting it for Ashley. Let's just say that, I will say. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, guys. Yeah, you you were crushing it. Um... I think you might be the best athlete on the team, just my personal opinion. Sorry, Brenna. No, I will say as a female on the team that I hands down say Ashley represents for the females and probably overall on the team. <laughs> she probably crushed some of the boys. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. You guys all do stuff I can't do. So, you know, put us all together and, and you know, we got the best team out there. Well, and speaking of putting us together, that's what I was kind of saying, um, like bringing the three of us together other than Conquer the Gauntlet. I think we all kind of have like a little history background together just briefly. Um, and Ashley and I, you and I are both uh, Broken Skull contestants previously, correct? Oh, yeah, that's correct. Different seasons, what, different yeah, years. Yeah, what season were you? Uh, season two. Two, okay. I couldn't remember if you were one in the beginning, the, the OG season or not. But, yes, that was that was fun times for us. And then you and I actually, originally, I guess we know each other, I'd say, from Battle Frog is how we officially met. And um, I like to remember, you actually reminded me that's the only time I beat you was one time. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I remember I, I, it clearly. Yeah, yeah no, because I didn't remember. And you reminded me, and I'm like, oh, my, I have to, I got to brag about that because it's been my goal to, like, beat you one of these times and, you know, I then you went and got, names. yeah, you have people were after you. That. And then you went and got pregnant, and then I didn't get to have a chance to beat you. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of time for that. Yeah. yeah. And you and Evan are connected, though, I guess, previously, too, through um, Strength and Speed, correct? Yep. Yeah, OCR Worlds last year. Yeah, I, had, uh, I was looking to put together a Strength and Speed team 2015, uh, right? Yeah. Yep. And, um... So I reached out to Corinna Coffin, who's like one of the – I didn't know that many female athletes. So I was like, uh, I need some females. Do you have any suggestions? And she's like – I think she gave me actually Brenna and uh, Ashley's name. Or maybe one of you gave me the other ones. I can't remember. But I tried to get both of you That's on the awesome. team. Brenna was injured. so um, And then uh, with a mix and match of people, and you guys did real well. A top ten uh, team at OCR World Championships. So that was that was cool. Good stuff for Shrank. Yeah, it worked out. And, uh, yeah, it worked out well. It's glad too, because you know, as like as a guy, I don't follow the females as closely, you know, because they're not my direct competition per se. Um, so it was kind of cool getting a little bit more exposed to that and uh, getting to know some of the big female names in the sport. Because some of you, some of you ladies, frankly, scare me. You know, I have to I have to watch my back as I'm running, make sure you're not you're not laughing <laughs> or passing. Hey Ashley, you better tell him. He better get start start following a little better because um you know we're coming after those guys now. <laughs> We're trying, that's for sure. Yeah, and if you if you come out to a CTG event, anyone listening, you'll uh, I'd watch out for these two ladies. They uh, more than once I've I've caught them right on my tail in the middle of the course, and uh, I usually finish on the podium, usually third or second. I guess who's the first in there? Never now and then. I was just gonna say, don't sell yourself short. <laughs> so, well, anyway. so other than. Our background, what's, um, Ashley, I mean, a lot of us know you, some of us know your background, or have heard you from other podcasts and um, articles you've done. What's your athletic background pre-OCR? Like, what were you, I mean, in high school, were you always an athlete, and 
what kind of led you into OCR? Yeah, I, I was kind of the person who tried all the sports, and then I found soccer, and that's where I really excelled. Um, I played in high school and um, played on, like, a premier team and then walked onto a college soccer team, and I just decided that that wasn't for me. I ended up quitting and tried to run college track, and that wasn't for me either, and kind of left running on the back burner uh, for a long time and picked it back up just a couple years ago and then really got into it because of OCR. Yeah, that's great. I think the uh, broad background of sports, I think that helps a lot of people, you know, just having having a bunch of functional movements kind of in their inventory and their repertoire that they've built up over years of training. Uh, well, help, I think it helps the transition a little bit easier. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, soccer especially, you know, you're constantly changing directions, changing speed. A lot of those components are things that, you know, show through the sport of OCR also, not to mention 90 minutes of endurance. <laughs> right, right. And it amazes me when I have a friend that's a referee for soccer and just like, I mean, seven miles easy in a soccer game. And that's it's amazing because I had no idea really just thinking about it because that wasn't a sport I excelled in or continued to do past the little, like, beehive YMCA stage. So it <laughs> translates and helps you. <laughs> right. Definitely set you up with a good background, that's for sure, because we, I know we've seen your speed, and, I mean, you've got the, the grip, but your speed definitely, I think, helps you and sets you apart from some other female athletes. Thanks. So what is a – What was your first – Oh, no, go ahead, Evan. Yeah. What was uh so pre pre pregnancy, pre baby, what is your what was like a normal training week for you? Just kinda of take us through, you know, did you strength workouts or all running workouts or kind of a mixed CrossFit type stuff? What did you uh what did you normally do? Yeah, so um there was a couple different things I would try to work into a weekly schedule. Um definitely going to Orange Theory Fitness. Uh that was very helpful for um, different interval training and some lifting. I mean, that's that's the most lifting I did was really um, dumbbells and those kind of things. I'm not a heavy lifter. I'm not a CrossFitter. Um, I ran I, every day. Um, most months I would average around 100 to 125 miles. Uh, every day at lunch, I would take my lunch break at the gym and get four miles in on the treadmill before I had to shower and head back. Um, I would do rock climbing. I went to some of the ninja style gyms to work on, you know, more of the climbing aspects. Um, but my, my schedule was varied, but I would try to get, you know, at least a workout in a day, if not two, sometimes three. Nice. That sounds like you had some good, uh, good mixed training there, some good volume. And it sounds like you, I think most importantly, enjoy your, the training you had set up. Oh yeah, Definitely. I think it's important to allow flexibility in the schedule to um, take advantage of the different things you want to do and not be too structured on every Monday I do this, every Tuesday. You know, kind of let yourself determine. That way there's still an element of surprise and something to look forward to as well. Cool. That keeps keeps you from being bored, and then it helps that you have a training partner every once in a while, right, that (laughs) you know help each other with running and – your climbing yeah. adventures and ninja adventures. Yeah, I'm assuming you're talking about Dustin. So <laughs> that'd be the fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's uh he's definitely helped push me, and you know in the, in the best way because on on the days I don't feel like running, you know he's he would literally drag me out the door, um and you know we have each other to push against too. So on the days I'm feeling good, I make him keep up with me, and on the days when when I'm not feeling so good. You know, he's he's making me chase him down. So it's really well, worked out. And the best athlete, you can't lie. Like, everybody has those days where you don't want to do it. You just oh, don't absolutely. want to. For sure. I think yeah. that's part of it, right? You'd be weird if you didn't. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, even I'm sure even Ryan and Lindsay have days. <laughs> they don't want to do it. <laughs> right. Then hopefully they have each other to say, no, we're doing it anyway. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, Dustin may be my favorite OCR person on the Internet. He, uh, he, for those of you who don't, who don't know uh, Dustin Randy, he, he photoshops, like, just random stuff in time. Like, on the cool side, he photoshopped you with the Conquer the Gauntlet glove, like, up in the air and lightning striking once. 
once with like yeah. a coming out of it. And then oh, yeah. just random <laughs> stuff like Ryan Atkins with a oversized rec bag. Um what else do we have? Baby Smith with like a tiny rec bag beating Ryan Atkins. <laughs> I was like, Baby yeah, that- Smith has already been made famous on social media. <laughs> Yeah, he was on the Rec Bag Instagram page the other day. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that picture's adorable. I love it. <laughs> Thanks. You, you guys crack me up. The, between you two and Jason Williams, <laughs> I, can't, I mean, I can't, I can't stop laughing. So. Yeah, we're a recipe for trouble most of the time. Uh, and, y'all, you know, everybody who, if you're tuning in, you need to check out, where, where's that video y'all posted? Was that from a Texas race, I think? <laughs> With the, like... The what video? The, the video, um, I think it was the drone footage and Dustin of y'all just like basically your whole, your flight, your travel through the airport. Y'all were walking all funny like oh, in the western. Yeah, that should be on Dustin's Facebook page. That was one of our many OCR trips. Um, yeah. uh, the highlight reel. <laughs> so lis- listeners tuning in, y'all, need, it's worth a watch for sure. Good, good laugh. You know, all OCR giggles for anybody watching. <laughs> for sure. That's awesome. Uh, but since we mentioned Baby Smith, and that's kind of what, like, the, the bulk of this is about and what we want to get to with you and see what you're up to these days, um, Baby Smith is your, your new baby boy that joined you recently, huh? Yeah, he's he's here. He he came early. He wasn't he wasn't about to wait till he was due. So we've had a long NICU stay. Yeah. Well, so bounce back for a minute and ex- talk to us about, like, Finding out that all of a sudden you're pregnant and surprise. I mean, being female myself, OCR athlete, and I mean, you were crushing it. Like we've said before, you, every race you ran, you either podiumed or I'd say top five if, you know, like maybe top 10, but definitely top five, I'd, I'd say easily. So all of a sudden you become pregnant and what, like take us through what happens, mindset, you know, kind of what you went through with that. Sure. Um, it's kind of funny. Dustin always jokes whenever somebody says something about it. He always jokes that that was the only way he could slow me down because I was I was starting to beat him too often. So that, <laughs> that was that was his technique uh, to slow me down. It's a good technique. But, good, yeah. yeah it worked. Um, <laughs> so basically, I mean, of course, it was a surprise and. I found out the day after Father's Day, ironically enough, wow. and um, Dustin was out of town on business um, for work. He was traveling out of the country, and I had to keep it a secret for four days. I did not tell anybody. Wow. Um, yeah. So, um, I, I can't I imagine not- bottling that up for four days. Jeez, girl. Exactly. I, I don't think I slept or ate or did anything else for those four days except wait for him to come back. And, um, of course, once he got back, uh, I had to tell him, but, I mean, I, I couldn't even look him in the eye because I was I didn't know what the reaction was going to be. Um, and I gave him a hug and just started bawling. And so I told him, and, of course, he was surprised as well, but it ended up being a great surprise. And um, and so that was the beginning of the journey. <laughs> um, where where should I take you next? Well, okay, so basically that was when when was that? Now I can't even remember. Do the math? It was, it was early. June. Okay. Yeah. summer. Yeah, so mid season basically, or kind of towards you know rounding out summer leading up to championships in the fall. Right. Um, You're still signed up for can, all these races. You've, I would say you, you already had your season set. And you plans. can, yep. and you can yeah, continue to race for a little bit, correct? Yeah. Um, luckily, I was able to keep racing for a little bit. Um, I knew plans like Worlds were going to have to wait. Um, so it, to my advantage, I, I hadn't registered yet <laughs> or booked or booked the airfare. So – that did me some favors, but I did have uh, large travel plans mm-hmm. in the future um, and, a, and a big season set up. So I was still able to travel and race through August, and it definitely made racing more of a challenge. Um, I, of course, had asked my doctor, you know, am I good to go? What What can I do? What can I not do? And as soon as I – you know, was trying to explain to the doctor what it what I do every weekend. Um, 
I got really lucky that my doctor said, oh, like the Spartan show. Oh, nice. nice. Yes, I was so thankful. I'm like, okay, at least this guy knows, you know, what I'm talking about. Because if you say OCR or obstacle course racing, some people are going to look at you sideways because they have no idea. Right, and just say you can't do anything because it's unknown to them. Right, exactly. And, and his response was, if you feel like you can do it, you can do it as long as you want. And the other thing he said was, just don't go body slamming into anything. Right. So, obviously, there was a whole degree of caution um, with any race because clearly the priority was my baby. And, and I think uh, – Knew that no matter – I think an important thing to note is, you know, you do this, like like you said, you do this every weekend. You know, you're you're very good at uh, racing. You're very good at obstacles. Um, and it's really athlete and person specific and doctor dependent. You know, you know you, know you can get over the stuff without, you know, slamming into things and hurting yourself. So, A hundred percent. Yeah. And, and that was the thing. I mean, I went in. When I when I went into the doctor, of course, they asked, you know, what do you do? How often do you do you exercise and stuff like that? I'm like, well, if you want to call it exercise, you know, a couple times a day, every day of the week. <laughs> so yeah, your normal is not everyone else's normal. Like and that's the average the thing. person. Right. Even when I was training in the gym, you know, you you have women approach you. Um, in a way where they're trying to be helpful, but it ends up being kind of demeaning Mm -hmm. um, to come up to you and say, you better take it easy uh, and stuff like that. And I'm like, I'm running, you know, an eight minute mile, a nine minute mile, a 10 minute mile. I'm taking it easy. Like this is easy for me. My easy is not necessarily very easy. One I was going to ask that kind of leads me to. So other than, you know, people coming up to you in the gym and then, with OCR being such a like social media sport where you know people are posting pictures all the time talking about it on Facebook and Instagram did you get i mean was there a lot of people commenting or saying anything to you personally did you deal with issues of people sending you messages about questioning what you were doing or why you were doing still racing you know people seeing pictures of you um hanging from monkey bars or something posing for a picture did you get any fall back from people being negative? Yeah, actually, it's really funny. It kind of goes both ways. And um, it seems like all a majority of the positive feedback I would get was actually from women. Um, just saying, you know, I'm, I'm not broken. A pregnancy doesn't break you. Um, you know, you're not disabled or anything like that just because you're pregnant. And I did get a lot of positive um, responses saying, you know, I'm glad you're showing that there's nothing wrong with continuing to do the things you enjoyed before um, getting pregnant. And at, in in the same, at the same time, yes, there were things said on social media. Um, I would say that anybody who had anything negative to say uh, never actually did come to me and say it. It was things that I would come across buried in other people's feeds or um, comments on other people's posts that were clearly directed towards me without necessarily saying my name. So, yeah, I mean, those things are hurtful. You're, you know, talking down about somebody behind their back and in, in, in not really having the ability to stand up for your, yourself, um, and you're at right. an emotional and, and explain time. what you're. I mean, it's like you aren't able to explain what you're doing and why. You shouldn't have to, but it's just you know when they don't approach you, you can't under make someone else like, understand what you're going through. So yeah, it's unfortunate and, that that happened and that you had to deal with that. But the positive feedback is awesome. I'm glad to hear that people were respecting and liking what you were your journey and. I mean, there's others There's others out there doing it, so it's amazing to see, you know, watching you on your journey inspired me, and, you know, I I want to be a mom, and I just keep thinking, I'm like, okay, well, I'll, like, race one more year, and then I can focus on being a mom, but I also wouldn't be upset if, you know, like, a surprise happened, and I all of a sudden became pregnant randomly. It would be a bummer and change, but I can look at you and be like, oh, I can keep training a little bit. I might kind of want to take advantage of being pregnant and just sitting around and stuffing my face, but... <laughs> 
you, you heard it, man. Brenna's open for business, apparently. <laughs> yeah. So feel free to start, start Facebook messaging her, start sending pictures. You know, she, she's thinking, interested. Oh, that was an Not open that. invitation. <laughs> she, she's interested, Anybody very interested. To... OCR men. Uh, yeah. I'm blushing right now. Thanks, guys. Yeah. All right. Anyways, Ashley. <laughs> The future of OCR rests on Brenna, so we need a we need oh another my. speedster guy to step it up. <laughs> oh <laughs> my gosh! Get another power couple out there. Yeah. There you go. You gotta have OCRcouples dot com. Oh, good website. Maybe I'll start that too. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a, a good new idea. dating site. Well, Added two projects, Evan. Maybe like an app, like a like a a Tinder, but like OCR yes, specific. Yes, exactly. Something like that. Instead of left or right, you gotta swipe up or down. Yeah. It's yeah, you have to post, and you have to post your like race finishes and stuff. That way, oh, you know, if you're like, uh, you were seventy fourth, that's a no kind of thing, <laughs> you know. Yeah, like you're, yeah, I like that. You're, it has in your in your every time your picture comes up, your race results from that specific picture comes up too. Yes, so, I so love you, it. So you can't go out there and just like pose for a nice picture and then like you know because it'll show a shitty result. So right. So you'll get the picture of like you you know grunting and having an having an awkward face on when you uh when it says like, you know, top three or whatever. So. That Ashley be, with an awkward oh face? Goodness. No. <laughs> if I remember yeah, correctly, funny. Ashley is like the queen of awkward faces on at races. Race Oh yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> if if I'm ever smiling in a race photo, it's probably because I went back out on the course after the fact just to play on an obstacle. Um because my race photos are that awful. Picture. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So it's back on track since y'all so went crazy with, like, offering me to everybody, pimping me out. Thank you. Anyways. um, I I uh, think, um, like we were talking about earlier, you know, other people who, like, look at you online are always going to think they know you better than you know yourself or, you know, your doctors know you. And they're always going to, you know, kind of judge without taking in all the facts. Um, So just something you have to deal with with uh having a you know op- fairly open social media account so yeah exactly i mean that's that's part of it um you know you're you're always walking a line of what to share what not to share um and i mean i think even more so through this journey um you know being pregnant you are a little more emotional and um you know so you you find yourself walking a, a fine line between being transparent and 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 oversharing. Yeah. Have you seen that video of there was like a Kenyan or Ethiopian track runner who ran a race like seven months pregnant? Like she was. Yeah. She was huge. That was so impressive. <laughs> and she, she put out a good time. She could embarrass some. She could seriously embarrass some guys. Oh, she would but, have embarrassed me for sure. <laughs> I mean, not even pregnant, just me on a good day. <laughs> so. We'll try to find well, that's that what way. I'm still amazed. I mean, like I said, following Ashley, watching you race and train still, and then, I mean, um, what is uh, Rachel Corvington, a friend of yours, you know, in Florida there, another pregnant mom, racing athlete, has a blog about it. So it's awesome to see other females doing it. And, I mean, I think what she, like, walked a 5K or something the, on the due date of her baby. And so it's just people do it and – own it and rock it and it's awesome and empowering and that's what I was going to ask you so you kind of talked about with Evan what you did for training pre-baby and you told us that you raced I guess you know a couple like two months from or three months June whatever to August um what did you do after racing when you I mean I assume did you continue to train on your own once you know you were done running and throwing yourself over walls (laughs) yeah of course um you know, you got to keep doing what you love regardless of your circumstances. And obviously things had to be modified, but um, I was still running when I could. And on the days I was uncomfortable, there was no shame in riding the bike or, you know, doing the rower, uh, what, whatever you could to remain, you know, keep some sense of normalcy. Um, Is that awkward I was, with, like, a belly, doing the rower? I feel like that would be really awkward. Um, It is it is. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like the the bar is hitting your like your tummy, and then like I feel like your legs. Just feel like, like everything probably inside. became awkward. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much everything gets kind of awkward, but um, I never really got big enough to to be in the pain and suffering phase. So, 
Um, that was a good thing. But I still went to some of the, like, ninja boot camps and those kind of things, like the, you know, um, Saturday trainings. I could still do monkey bars and rings and rigs and um, those kind of things. Uh, you get to the point where you can't do pull-ups anymore because it's like wearing a weighted vest. But Well, people, that's what's made me laugh is, I've you know, I've heard comments of people say, like, oh, my gosh, I'm pregnant and, okay, yes, the slamming into walls, but hanging and going across monkey bars, I'm, like, thinking to myself, not just you, but anyone, you know, you know your own strength and you know how good you are and this is what you do for a living. So it's just funny to have people, they sit there and judge and come up with crazy thoughts like, oh, my gosh, a pregnant lady going across monkey bars, how dare her? <laughs> like, you, yeah. you can still do that. <laughs> I mean, but I just and, want, I just want our listeners to know because I feel like there's probably a lot of women listening that it's just like you know, you you can do these things. It's not it's not crazy, and you just know your own body and your own strengths. So, yeah, I mean, in doing these things, you you also know if I'm gonna get off this this rig or if I'm gonna get off these monkey bars, what's the safe way to do it? You know, it's not like I would just let go and land on my stomach. You. <laughs> You know the feeling before you're you're done, and you know when to get down. You know what I mean, so that you're not putting yourself at risk. Right. Yeah. You're being absolutely. Yeah, and the the weight increases relatively slowly. You know, so you're. It's not like you go from your normal weight to like plus twenty pounds the next day, and all of a sudden you right. can't do monkey bars. You know, it's it gradually gets harder until, you, you know, you can't go across, and then that's it. How right. much weight? Then did, you know. How much weight did you gain? I gained about seventeen pounds. See, gosh, you're, yeah, and you sit, man. Well, so that kind of leads with uh, your weight and how small you are. Can we get into, I guess, kind of jumping forward? Um, when I actually, I don't remember where I was, but I think I was traveling somewhere, and our girl, we have a conquer the gauntlet, you know, group chat for the girls. And sorry, Evan, no. you're actually kind of, you're kind of lucky. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I remember getting a message and someone, I think it was Nikki, saying, um, did you see the post? Ashley had her baby. And my thought, I, I literally said, I don't know if you went back and read messages. I said, Ashley who? Because our Ashley is due in February with a big, like, question mark, exclamation mark. So go walk us through that a little bit because that's, I don't know if, you know, anybody, the listeners know what happened and where you are today with um, Baby Smith. Yeah, so um, in December, uh, I went to work, and it was just a normal day. I got up and drove two hours to Tampa to go to work (laughs) and got to work, and I started feeling kind of weird, like I was having cramps and stuff, and I didn't really think much of it, and I ended up telling my mom. I, I called her from work, and I was like, man, I just don't feel right today, and told her and she works at a healthcare um, facility so she had told the nurses what was going on and they said tell Ashley she has to go to the hospital and I was like man these people are so dramatic (laughs) Um, so I had a I was supposed to have a doctor's appointment the next day but I called the doctor and I was like okay so this is what's going on and the doctor said go to the nearest hospital and I was like, why would I go to the hospital? And, again, I'm thinking everybody is so dramatic because I was fine. Right. Um, So I ended up going to the hospital, and I remember it was a Tuesday. I don't know why. Um, Got to the hospital. You just left left work by yourself and went to the hospital? Oh, yeah, I drove myself there. went to the hospital, checked in, and the doctor came in, and they did, like, a swab and they told me I was leaking amniotic fluid. Um, So at that point, they admitted me to the hospital and said I was going to have to stay there until I had the baby. And I was only 32 weeks pregnant. So um, they said, you know, we're going to try to keep this baby in you another two weeks. And so basically lay here until this happens. Um. So Dustin had come all the way. Can imagine what's going through your head at this point? Yeah, I was freaking out. Dustin came from Orlando, and it's hours away, two hours away, basically. Um, Comes to the hospital. They're able to stop the contractions. They give you magnesium, which is to help um, protect the baby's brain. 
and they do steroids in case the baby is born so that the baby can breathe. And so basically I'm injected with all these things and pumped with IVs and everything else. And I sit there for two days and nothing eventful happens. And we told the nurses that we were going to have to make a break for it. Um, so we, <laughs> seriously, we. I can we just imagine that. the way y'all say this too, or like Dustin, you know, I just imagine some not normal scenario. <laughs> yeah, we, we pretty much had to hurry up and get our paperwork um, in line and, and said, we're leaving and we're going directly to this other hospital, which was the hospital I was supposed to deliver at um, closer to home because if I had a baby in the NICU, I did not want to have to drive to and from it, um, to visit the baby. So we made a break for it. We made it to the hospital um, in Orlando. And as soon as I got there, my contractions were about five minutes apart. And wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, after not having them for two days, um, the contractions were five minutes apart, and I got admitted to the other hospital where they um, tried to stop the contractions once. It didn't work, and um, my water ended up really breaking. And then within, let's see, I got to the other hospital around 5 p.m., and had the baby at 1 a.m. the next day. So, wow. So officially, how early? Um, I had him at 32 weeks in one day. Wow. That's yeah. crazy, and that, that's just a crazy. I can't imagine. I mean, it's got me like heart racing just hearing you tell the story. You know, and I'm not even again. I'm not a mom myself, but I, you know, female and just again scary situation there. Um, so how, how much did, what, Baby Smith, what, explain, give us the full name of your baby, please. Yeah, um, it's Smith William Radney. He was born on December 16th, and he weighed three pounds and six ounces. Um, wow. Yeah. yeah, luckily when he arrived, he was in great health. They gave him a nine, um, a nine and a nine on his APGAR score, which is how they rate babies, um, you know, responsiveness and stuff when they're born. So he came out crying and um, breathing and, you know, all the things you expect a new baby to do. So I got to hold him for a minute or two before he got taken to uh, the NICU. He had to be first place just like his mama, I guess. <laughs> I guess so. He was he was racing for something. <laughs> Wow. So, okay. Wow. That's in insane and hard to believe. And I mean, amazing. Congratulations on a very healthy baby, at least, you know, coming out very early and surprising. Again, another surprise. <laughs> Life is full Setting of up, I guess I was saying you can just, I guess, be prepared that Smith's going to hand you a lot of them. But I love the name. Very strong name. Um, so walk us through a little bit. I mean, this has got to be, I know, very hard on a new mom. I mean, new mom is crazy as it is, but this is a totally different thing than anybody ever expects in, or anticipates. So what is life like for you right now and for you and Dustin? And I mean, kind of like walk us through what's going on with y'all. Yeah. Um, it's been really interesting because you never, ex you never realize that this in between area exists where you're parents, but you don't have a baby. Um, I mean, we have a baby, but he's still in the hospital. It's been 40 days. Not that I'm counting. Um, so you, you, you know, it's, it's hard. You come every time you walk out of that hospital room to go home for the night, um, you know, your heart breaks, you leave a little bit of yourself there, um, every time you leave and, you know, we kind of lay in bed at night and uh, kind of reflect on the day and, and it just comes down to, you know, you want your baby to to be home and it's yeah. it's it's really hard <laughs> understandably i mean and no one knows that feeling unless you've experienced something like this or a situation you know that's just makes you stronger though we know that um this is just gonna fuel your fire and motivate you even more and so with that being said have you been given the go-ahead are you back to training and working out again and is that able to help you kind of fill some time and clear the mind a little bit and said earlier um 
you know, you know your body better than anyone else. And um, uh, they don't they don't give you a follow up appointment until six weeks later. Um, but that being said, uh, I know my body better than anybody else. So um, I I've started off easy, you know, doing a mile run at a slow pace um, to see what I can handle. And of course, Dustin will go with me to make sure I'm good to go. And um, and I've been working my way up from there. Um, my back is still really sore from the epidural, so things like pull-ups are out of the question. But I know that about myself. Wow. Um, things you don't. You know, I, I mean, I don't. Yeah, I, wouldn't even, I wouldn't even thought about that. That's what I'm like. I wouldn't know that or think about that. So wow, yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> good to know. <laughs> yeah, and I to do a pull-up, and then I was like, nope, that's not going to happen. So, um, I found that out. I found that out the hard way. Um, but I haven't done it since, so lesson learned. Listening to your body, that's what you got to do. Yeah. So we lost our connection there real briefly. Uh, we were about to talk about Ashley's 2017 season. So, you know, what do you have planned for 2017? What major races? When's your first race coming back? Kind of just take us through that. Yeah, um, so I'm not sure when my next OCR will be. Uh, it's kind of depending on, you know, how I feel and, and how the recovery is going and if we have our baby home. So um, I do know that my first Conquer the Gauntlet is going to be in May. I'm planning on going to Atlanta. Oh, and, Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So hopefully I will be there with the baby in tow. Oh, man. Well, yay and good. I guess I won't have to be too scared yet. I've got some time, hopefully, to maybe get my running legs back up because I think I've seen some of your easing back in training times that you've eased your way back up to, and they're already scaring me. So, um, Oh, geez. I'm going to have to start working a little harder, but I won't be running Atlanta because I'll be building it, so I'm not scared yet. But <laughs> that's, that's great. I think uh... – I can't wait to see you guys back out on the course, and I can't wait to meet uh, Baby Smith. And I think, uh, you know, as you, you know, in a couple of years from now, you'll look back on this, and it, you won't even, I mean, you'll obviously you'll remember the NICU, but it will, it'll seem like a, like a long time ago. And um, All right, uh, so we keep getting disconnected. I think we left off talking about Ashley's 2017 season, basically saying she's going to start getting back into it in May with Conquer the Gauntlet Atlanta. Um, did you have anything else to add to that? Uh, we're having some connection problems here, so we're going to kind of speed through the end of this. Um, no, I mean, I'm really excited to see you guys and represent for Conquer the Gauntlet for yet another season. And I know there are some exciting things planned, and I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, where can people find you, you online or social media? What social media stuff that you have that's public? Instagram, um, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera? Yep, I have uh, Instagram and Facebook, uh, Ashley Samples, well, Ashley Jean Samples, J-E-A-N-N-E. And uh, let me see, Instagram is AJ Samples. Cool. And I think uh, not to, you know, point out your name here, but, I, you know, someone who's gone through the whole pregnancy while being a competitive athlete, I think that's fairly unique um, and definitely a good touch point if anyone else is going through something similar. Yeah, definitely. Feel free to reach out. It's good. We hopefully maybe someone will reach out to you through this and you know have a message or question for you that you you touched for him. So that's what we want with this episode and things like that. That's what we're doing here. Yeah, definitely. That would be great. Cool. So we're gonna wrap up the podcast. Uh, before we go, uh, Ashley or Brenna, do you want to plug any sponsors or thank anyone? Um. Uh, yeah. I yeah, I just want to thank thank you guys for having me on, and and of course thank you always to um, Conquer the Gauntlet Pro Team, and I know we have a bunch of new sponsors. We do. Uh, Atomic Climbing Holds, Harbinger Fitness, Rock Tape. Well, there's their carryover from last year, uh, and a couple other ones that are coming soon that we haven't announced yet. So. Hush hush. <laughs> Brenna. I'll- um, yeah, so I just have a quick one. My shout-out is actually from today. Um, someone that actually supports me, Marina, who used to be um, Athletics 8, has always taken care of me, so Marina supports. I went to yoga today, and they have yoga pants. 
and they were amazing. So shout out to Marina Sport for Yoga Pants. Check them out. Cool. And if you, that's all I have nice. today. If you're not following uh, Strength and Speed on Facebook, uh, make sure you hit us up. And if you're not following the Conquer the Gauntlet Pro Team, make sure you hit us up there too. We do weekly videos, both technique and workout videos that are up there every week. Plus, we have offer random motivational stuff and all sorts of good information. So that's on Facebook. On the main Strength and Speed website, uh, we have a couple of things going on there. Uh, every about week or two, we post a new article. So the most recent articles are, one, the Strength and Team developmental team is opening applications for 2017. So basically, you apply. Uh, you get some free Strength and Speed merchandise. You get some uh, customized coaching. We pull you into a Facebook group and offer, you know, answer your questions with a mix of great athletes in there, CrossFit athletes, a former female professional boxer. Brent is in there. I'm in there. Uh, Jordan Smith, one of our ultra runners, who's also very good at World's Toughest Mudder. Uh, he also ran across the state of Michigan. Uh, Joel Forsythe's in there, also a World's Toughest Mudder guy. I think he finished seventh in 2015 or 16. 2015. So, anyway, if you're interested in that, uh, and then when I get, you know, discounts or uh, stuff from sponsors or affiliates, a lot of times I uh, try to hook you guys up if, uh, as long as the company's okay with it. So, if you're interested in that, apply to the Strength and Speed uh, Developmental Team. And then other than that, we are also doing a OCR training weekend. So, there's a couple of dates listed on the site if you're interested in coming out to train uh, just north of Nashville. I have a training facility training facility available get some customized coaching for the weekend uh ashley just dropped off the call again so i think it's just me and brenna so brenna yeah you want to say goodbye to everyone yeah it's been great loved another episode so thanks for listening y'all and this is brenna red beast calvert saying have a good night cool thanks for tuning in uh coming up we'll have uh logan nagel uh from the selection on uh, to talk about his experience there and- <laughs>